everybody! So it has been um, quite a while since I made a video on this account, but I wanted to make one today because um, I got accepted into Sheridan's animation program for 2020. Yay! Um, very, very exciting because uh, it's been something that I've been dreaming about doing for uh, years now. So very exciting news. Um, and I wanted to make a video just to uh, kind of show off my uh, portfolio because I actually uh, I applied to Sheridan twice, so once in 2019 and then once in 2020. Both of the uh, domestic cutoffs were the same, but um, my first application I got a 67%, whereas my second one I got a 97%. So it's a huge jump. Um, and I think that showing off what I have, what I did, kind of talking about my process might help some people in the future. So I thought that I would put it into video form. Just a uh, little quick disclaimer before we get into things. Um, a lot of my improvement this year was a product of um, the stuff that I learned at the Animation Portfolio Workshop in Toronto. It's something that I would highly recommend taking if you have the resources to do so. I definitely probably would have failed out again this year if it wasn't for their help and everything that I was able to learn with them, so they were a, a huge, huge, huge help in the, all of this. Um, let's get- let's get into it. Let's do it. This category is life drawing, which I got a 10 out of 10 in. Um, there's not much I can say about this category. These are my two longer poses. I believe the first is uh, 20 minutes. The second one is about five. And my shorter poses, the first is a 30 second pose and the second is a three minute pose. Not entirely sure. If I could give, give one tip to everyone for the entire portfolio, it would be for the life drawing category, definitely starting to go to life drawing earlier and doing it often helps a lot. It's a skill that comes with a lot of practice and uh, only time will help with that one. Also, shading isn't necessary, but I thought I think it looks nice and it's fun to do for me. So that's why I did shading in some of mine. Tried to, to focus on- I tried to focus on structure mostly for the longer poses and more line of action and getting nice energy for the shorter ones. Second category is the hand drawings, which I got an 8 out of 10 on. So the category for- the category- the prompt for this year was two drawings of a hand reaching and then grabbing for a door handle. This one, I understand the score on. I did leave this one alone, kind of did the drawings a lot earlier on, and then left them alone for the rest of the portfolio period. I believe I did these in January, um, and maybe even December, and just kind of left them um, to focus on other things that were more important to me at the time. Since I think that there's about seven or eight just of the hand grabbing the door handle. It's very difficult for me. For some reason, I just couldn't get this exact pose down. But it was very similar to the life drawings. And just doing a lot of them helped. This was like the most recent one to the deadline. The the third category is the character rotation, which I got a 15 out of 15 on. This is my original character. His name is Finch. He is based off of a bird, the bullfinch to be more exact, which is how he got his name. He's very round. That's his entire personality. I didn't do much development outside of that, but I think that he is extremely cute. My process for the rotation was all traditional. Same with 90% of the stuff in this portfolio. I, I did a rotation of all of the basic shapes for the character and then moved on to doing a, ro like the, a similar process for all the character details. 
the glasses were the hardest thing to nail down for this particular character just because they were such a, a thin object and obviously they're circles so they're not as consistent as I would have liked them to be but I definitely tried to show as much volume as I could drawing through the character and some, I don't know, like a nice original cohesive design um, volume is very important here I think the biggest difference between my two portfolios was the character rotation because my first character in the 2019 portfolio was almost entirely two-dimensional just looked very very flat so this is almost like the antithesis of that character I tried to show as much volume as I could um, next category is the animation which I got a 15 out of 15 on we were given a character model sheet of this juice box character to draw I believe my animation was exactly 24 frames, which is the minimum amount. It was done entirely digital. I went through a lot of different rough animation versions of this before I settled on one that I really liked. Still not entirely satisfied with the crunch at the end, but it was a hard thing to nail. I was focusing a lot on consistency, throughout the entire animation with the juice box to make sure that it was the same size throughout, but I also was focusing a lot on line quality and just making sure that it turned out nice, especially with the, the straw moving differently than the juice box. So next category is the storyboard, which I got a 25 out of 25 on. This one is a hard hitter for the portfolio considering it is a quarter of the marks and I, it took me forever to come up with a idea for the story, for the storyboard. Even then, I don't think my story idea was super unique or anything like that. Apparently a lot of people had a similar idea, but I tried to focus on telling the story in an interesting way so i had a bunch of variety in the different shots that were used and tried to do kind of unconventional shots like i for panels three and four i did a low angle shot and then a higher angle shot just to get the camera moving around more interestingly as well as a lot of time that I spent on the storyboard was spent getting the character consistent with the model sheet. This character was super hard for me to draw. For some reason, even- it was the same character for the 2019 portfolio. Even then, I, I did not understand how to draw this guy until probably late January. But even then, uh, keeping it on model but also having exaggerated expressions and clear action and stuff like that just telling telling a story in a way that's very visually interesting but also clear uh, so making sure that nothing's super vague in the way that it's moving or very c confusing because um, it is four panels which is super hard to tell a detailed story in so kind of cutting corners to make sure that each panel is an essential essential part of the story um yeah trying trying to tell uh trying to tell a interesting story in four panels is pretty hard because you can't get too detailed with it and there's definitely a bunch of stuff that i drew and then cut out my rough drawings had a lot more panels but it was mainly just to figure out what was the most key in the the sequence of events and narrowing it down to those four next is linear perspective so we weren't given any specific prompts this year it was just an indoor layout and an outdoor layout 
So for my indoor layout, I decided to go with this basement scene. It's kind of like a painter's basement. There's a lot of painting equipment around and this little child has come downstairs to investigate whatever noises they've been hearing and they see this little rat scurrying along. I went through so many different ideas to get down to this one and it was probably the most basic out of all of them. I think there was like a science lab with an escaped alien at one point but it was definitely the one that I felt most secure in for providing visual interest as well as like an interesting story. And then my outdoor layout is this little scene of a bunch of houses up in the mountains and the character is doing some laundry, shaking out some laundry on the porch. This one I mainly decided to go with uh, visual interest. I just wanted something that was kind of unique and also showed a lot of depth which is uh, what the the flags are there for and the receding mountains because the outdoor layout isn't so much focusing on structure like the indoor one is with all the boxes and the, this one. The, it was probably the part of the portfolio that took the longest other than the storyboard. I think they both took an equal amount of time but I definitely had a lot of fun uh, coming up. And the last category is personal work, which I got a 10 out of 10 on. I tried to focus on variety of content in all of these. So there's five pieces. The first is a portrait I did digitally of my best friend. Um, the second is a digital painting I did of my characters, which is in more of like a stylized digital painting. And I put together a compilation of a bunch of different cafe sketches that I did um, over the months. Which is, there's some close-ups on the side. Then there was a mural. This was part of my summer job during the 2019 summer that uh, you can see the de design for on the left and sort of like the process for it to get to the final. It was done on a team of people, so it's not entirely my work, but it is my design, so I decided to include it. And the, the last piece that I did for my personal work is this three-page comic that is kind of an extension of my webcomic. It... just to kind of... I wanted this to be like the shining star of my, my personal work to show off some uh, sequential drawing, storytelling, and kind of character consistency and stuff like that. So that's it. Thank you so much for watching. Best of luck to anybody who is applying, any future applicants, if that's what you're watching this video for. If you have any specific questions or concerns about the portfolio, you can DM me on social media at Celandine Dream, or you could comment below. I'll read stuff. I don't mind answering questions. Yeah, best of luck, and I can't wait to see everybody at Sheridan this fall.